Hello, hello, and welcome to this new, I don't know, series? <laughs> I don't know how to call it. Whoa, look at those many people. So, hello everybody who joined in the live stream. We are live and not with the usual Freakout Camp uh, curriculum series. I've been playing with uh, Code Wars for quite a while. And I thought that this will be something very fun to do. For those of you who don't know what Code Wars is, it's basically uh, coding challenges which you can do using different programming languages. I'm doing it using JavaScript, but you can use, I think, uh, most of the... Not sure, let's see. Well, somewhere they have the languages. Look at these. Python and C and all of those languages. I've been asking people on Twitter what I should do. Uh, well, if I should do Code Wars. And they were pretty excited. So am I. Now, uh, for those of you who don't have a Code Wars account, I highly suggest you create one, it's free and you can climb the ladder with me. So far I've been completing 132 katas. Uh, the problems here are called katas. I'm not sure if I pronounce it right. And uh, each of the kata have a, uh, has a Q, which is the level. Not sure... Can we see hmm. some information, I think, wiki, not sure. Well, so uh, basically you have these katas and they have different difficulties. The 8Q and 7Q are the easiest. Then you have 6 and 5, 4 and 3 and 2 and 1, which are the hardest. I never did the 2 and 1. Which would be interesting to do in a future live stream, <laughs> not today. This is a uh, pilot episode, I think, should we call it, where I'm going to see how this works. Feel free to ask questions. Whenever you have a question, just let me know. Uh, oh wow, 31 people, that's insane. Where have you been? <laughs> Hello, last chain, joy, nail, blank expression, Mihai, Ivan, Togar, whoa, and look at that, Florian Pops talk, talking a lot in the chat. All right. And Keith, Rahman, welcome all of you. Awesome. Okay, so for today i think we can just do a couple of eight and seven cues uh... <laughs> yo salute uh ivan i, I guess people don't like free again <laughs> well i think they do they just weren't uh around whoa a lot of subscribers also been a crazy day a lot of people subscribed like over five not 600 by now. Hey, Republic of China, welcome. Okay. Uh, hmm. I think we can start with an easy one. Maybe let's do an 8. We can select the difficulty here and I'm going to do them with JavaScript. When we get to 6Q, can we do the partial keys one? I got stuck with it. Uh, sure, just uh, send me the link and uh, or remind me if you're in the live chat just remind me when we get there let me know if everything's good with the sound with the video and everything i don't know also if one of you is a designer and would like to help me design a thumbnail for this new series that will be awesome and i'm not also sure about the name codewars.js i called it because we're doing code wars challenges in JavaScript, but well, I don't know. As I said, it's a pilot episode. 
and uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, let's start with an 8Q, which is the easiest. Uh, I see I've done that. Maybe, I don't know, in the future I should create a new account and start from scratch. I am at 4Q now, or I just I could just continue. Let me know. Should I start from scratch or just continue on this account? Okay. Find the first non-consecutive number. Okay, this looks fun. Uh, it has a lot of text. I <laughs> I usually am lazy to read all the text, but uh, your task is to find the first element of an array that is not consecutive. By not consecutive, we mean not exactly one larger than the previous element of the array. Okay, so that's a lot of let's. Uh, we can click the train button and now we are here in this nice editor. On the left we have the instructions and uh, on the right here we can write our code and we have some tests. The nice part with uh, these challenges is that after you complete it you can uh, check it if it works. All right, I need to get my, uh, I don't know how it's called, home slippers, home shoes. Those are we are wearing in your house when you're freezing your feet. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I think no one understands what I said. All right, if you join the live stream, say hi. At any time, feel free to ask questions and I'll do my best to interact with you as much as possible and at the same time do the, the challenge. Good. So apparently this function gets in an array of numbers and we need to find which one is missing. I guess we can start with um, just looping over the array and find if the next one is not the previous one plus one. I guess that will be the easiest approach to this. All right, let's do that. So for, I'm going to do an old for loop. I less than array dot length. I plus plus like that. <laughs> Rohan, waking up at 1 a.m. to watch your live stream. <laughs> okay, so now, I think, let's see, you will also be able to hear my thought, of, my process, because I am going to try to walk over everything I'm doing. Good. So let's get the current one, which will be array of i, and then the next one, which will be array i plus uh, 1, right? And if we do i plus 1, we don't have to go up to the array that length, we can just uh, skip the last uh, for loop because we're checking here plus one. Hopefully that makes sense. And if current plus one is different than the next. So uh, let's take this array as an example. We're checking this element with the next one. If, it's, if this plus one is different than the next one, uh, then we want to return what? We want to return this plus one, right? Because in this case, four and six, we're checking four plus one is five and is different than six. So then we just return uh, current plus one. So return current plus one. So that should do it for the base case. Uh, now I'm not sure. We ne also need to check if um, well, let's run the tests and see how many they pass, if they pass. Okay, expected 6 instead got 5. Uh, your test to find the first element. Oh, so we need to find the first element of the array that is not consecutive, so not the missing element. Okay, okay, my bad. So then we just return next because this will be 6 in our case. Cosmin Morar, hi, have you tried competitive programming? Uh, not yet. 
Okay, so this should work. We passed the test. Now, if we click attempt, it will try the test with uh, more. Well, it will try the code with more tests. This is so loud. Is the subscription loud to you too? Let me know. All right. Uh, good. So we get the couple which are not okay. Let's expected null instead got undefined. Expected null instead got undefined. Okay, so apparently if uh, we don't find something, I guess they said it in the... <laughs> if the whole array is consecutive, then return null. Okay, okay. So read the entire instruction. We can just return null here at the end because we're not uh, finding anything any non-consecutive numbers here. All right, let's attempt now and look at that. It passes now. Uh, this it's not perfect because oh well, actually it is because we're not starting from one. We can start from whatever number we want. So yeah, this this example is um, nice. Good. I was thinking if we could do it with a for each loop, but we can't return from a for each loop. So I guess this is the solution we're going to submit. Why not? Let's submit it. And the nice part with CodeWars is that when you're submitting your uh, your solution, look at this. You can find the solutions of other people. In this case, is well, it's exactly as ours. Or look at that, we have array.find, value index, and value different than index plus array.0. Whoa, now this is some fun stuff. Return number is integer, result otherwise no. Okay, so in the future, we're going to try to do stuff like this, which is a little more complex. All right, everything good so far? Are you cozy? Are you prepared? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's uh, do a 7 one. No addition here. This looks fine. No, no addition. What I'm reading. No oddities here. Alright. You'll see me fail a lot, which probably will be funny, but, well, not for me. Maybe for you. Who knows? Florine, what do you do when we don't understand one of the solutions what do we do when we don't understand um, try to understand as much as possible if you want I would also suggest you go and um, get the code and split it apart see exactly what each line of code does uh, but the good part is if that uh, you're going to do these challenges with time you'll get better and better so for example i had an experience when uh, i applied for toptal if you guys heard of those uh, and they gave me to do two of these challenges in one of the interviews but i failed the second challenge because i ran out of time so then, uh, well, because I was so close, they allowed me to do it again. And I had like a week until the next uh, the re-interview. I don't know how it's called. And in that week, it was a week or two. I don't remember 100%. But I know that in that week or two, whatever time it was, I played a lot. A lot of code fights. It was back then the website. Now it's called Signal, and I did probably hundreds of these type of coding coding challenges with JavaScript. I did so many that uh, if we go to GitHub, I also stored my own. Uh, I created all the algorithms from scratch, and if we go to repositories, app. Uh, all js i think i stored it yeah all js and here collections.js 
here I stored all of this, uh, my own submissions for those challenges. I think it's more than 1000 lines of code. Yeah, 1002. So these are different functions for, I don't know, IP4 address check or product of digits of n or... So I was doing these like crazy. Well, as I do everything. <laughs> Ovidio, thank you. Uh, and then, well, so I got to do the second interview, well, the interview again, and the second time I just nailed it. I, I don't know, I had a lot of time left. So yeah, learn from my experience and uh, do these type of things. If you're applying for a company in which uh, you'll get these type of uh, exercises, I'm not sure. Some of the companies don't require them. Some of them do, but uh, I also do them for fun, these challenges. I don't know, I just like to do them with JavaScript. Okay, good. So, enough talking, let's do something. Write a function, small function, that returns the values of an array that are not odd. All values in the array will be integers. Return the good values in the order they are given. Okay. That looks fun. Do, 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 do. So no odds. That means we should return the evens. All right. Uh, should I do it with the for loop or I should just do with the filter? I guess just do with the filter. So we can return values that filter. And here we get the value and we want the value to be uh, its division by 2 should have uh, 0 remaining, right? So this filter method will go over all the uh, elements from the values array and for all of the, of the elements we'll apply this function which will return the value modulus 2 equal equals 0, well, this uh, expression, which checks if the number is even. If it is and it's true, then it will keep it in the array. If it's false, it will uh, just throw it to the garbage. So let's test this and look at that. It passes. Now, another way to do like for let i zero i less than values dot length i plus plus and then here you could do if uh, values of i values of i modulus 2 is zero then you can create a new array oops like that and here you would do array that push values of i like that and at the end instead of this it will just do return array so that will be um, I don't know, probably an easier to read if you don't know the array methods on JavaScript but yeah the the result is the same all right let's skip this Console that and just send. Well, I guess I can delete. Okay, let's see. Tomorrow there is a contest on code forces and it is a division 3 contest, so beginner level. It's not easy though. I think you should try it. Road 10k. <laughs> yeah. Uh, code forces. Could you send me a link? That looks interesting. How are you, Cosmin? I think you're Cosmin from Facebook, right? Alrighty. Let's go to, I don't know, another seven, or we should try a more advanced one, a six one. Yep. So you can see that the same, uh, the same submission is applied. So values filter and yeah. For these easy ones, the submissions you will see that they are uh, 
the same because well it's an easy one and you know if you're playing enough you kind of know how to do it the i don't know fastest way or stuff but if we're advancing you'll see that there will be even more clever ways and we'll learn how to use regex and all the fun stuff okay so here we have a sixth cue which uh your x to write a cipher a simple cipher that rotates every characters in the range azaz -AZ, special characters will be ignored by the cipher by 13 characters okay we already did uh something like this in our quest to conquer precode camp so i'm just going to skip it for now okay this is a five one no thank you for now the <laughs> four one come on give us something easier for now well i just go here then and uh partial keys uh I don't like to read that much. Give me something simple. Uh, someone suggested something. Mihai, do you have the link to that partial keys? Oh, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, if Mihai requested it, he's been a long time supporter of this channel. So, in his honor, I'm going to try this see what happens <sighs> okay i have some orange lemonade which is so good 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 let's see the rub you need to make a function that takes an object as an argument and returns a very similar object but with a special property the returned object should allow a user to assess Access values by providing only the beginning of the key for the value they want. For example, if the given object has a key ID number, you should be able to access its value on the returning object by using a key ID num or even simply ID. Num or number shouldn't work because we are only looking for matches at the beginning of a key. Okay, so I see what they're doing here. We're getting an object with the property of A, B, C, D, and we need to allow on that object to say O dot A, B, C, D, A, B, C, A, B, and A. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look that scary. So let's try it. Okay, Rishab, keep up the good work. That's what I'm trying. All right, I am so surprised. 31 people are watching. Where have you been where I did the Code Wars? Uh, not the Code Wars, the Precode Camp. All right, train. <laughs> Hopefully you'll join in the next ones. All right, I have a lot of things planned for this channel, so it should be fun. Whoa, so now this is interesting. I thought that we're only getting one of one property of the object but apparently we're getting a ton whoops all right good so let's think we have an object uh yeah a good thing to do before doing any of these challenges is to stop for a second and think through what you're going to do I always, well, I not always, I sometimes like to even write down a list of steps and I need to take. Hello Rodan, welcome. Okay, so the first thing will be to loop over the properties, properties of the object. Next, the second thing will be to create, um, Create all the sub string uh, properties properties on that object. All right, and assign them to the value. Okay, 
good. So apparently we need like two uh, loops. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we get the object, but how are they checking then? Subject, partial keys. Okay, so on the subject, uh, so we need to return a new object with all of these properties. I'm not sure, so let's see. O, A, B, C, D. So O will be equal to something, and then we need to access that o dot uh, okay so we need to return an object i think <laughs> good so let's loop over the objects properties we can do that by doing object uh, dot is object like that this function gives us all the keys of the object of the obg object in this case and then we can loop over all the keys like that so this will return an array of the keys and then on that array we're doing a for each on the key all right so now we should have all the keys which is good next we need to get the keys which are basically a string and loop over them also so let's do a for let i equal zero i less than key dot length i plus plus all right and now we can just uh, create a new key which will be key dot slice from zero up to i uh, I or I plus one. So the slice method, uh, or we can I also use substring. Well, I'm not sure. Let's see what substring does. Substring. Now, uh, you can, you are free to search for the methods. You don't have to memorize the methods. You just have to know they're existing. All right, so you can see here, we can see what the, um, the substring does. So we have the hello world, and then substring one and four, let me zoom in. If we try it, we get ELL. -L. So it starts at index one, and goes one, two, three, up to index four. Zero, one, two, three, four, okay, not included four. All right, so that does that. We can do substring then. We want to start from index zero and go up to i. First time i will be zero, uh, which won't give us anything. So we need to do i plus one. Okay. Now, if we console that log this new key, we should hopefully see all the variants of these keys provided. Let's do a test and check. Okay, look at that. So we have for the A A A, we have A A A A A A <laughs> A A B A B C. Okay, so now we got all the properties. Uh, how about using includes? Why would you want to use includes? Jeffrey Newton, hi, greetings. Okay, so now we get all these keys. What we want is to create a new object. And on that new object, whoa, I get a lot of subscribers. That's impressive. <laughs> on that new object, we want to create a property with the value of the new key, and that property should be equal to, uh, let's see, our object.key. I'm going to go over what this does in a second. Let's just see if that works. New object, return. This should work, not really. Return one for keys A and A. Expected two to equal one. 
Okay, let's cancel that log or new object. Say thank you to your new subscribers. Thank you to my new subscribers. <laughs> I'm not sure if they live or not. Some might not be live. Uh, A is two. What? Object that key. Uh, object that key. This will be piece of string. Okay, something's not good. Let's save the value here. Const value will be uh, object that key. Do some spacing here, and now this will go here. I'm not sure if the substring is a well. It shouldn't affect the string. This should be the same issue. Now I'm not sure. A A A A. Oh, I think I know. I know what's the issue. Uh, what's their expected output? Uh, you can see that the A is overwritten. You are creating the key A again, yeah. Exactly, so you overwrite it. That's true. Okay, so how does he want us to do that? Should return one for the keys A and an A. Why not two? So what's the let's go over the instruction again. Be aware that you could simply add all the partial keys one by one to the object. However, for the sake of avoiding clutter, we don't want to have a JSON with a bunch of nonsensical keys. Thus, in a random test, we will test to check that you did not add or remove any keys from the object. Oh, okay. Also, if a key is tested that appears at the beginning of more than one key in the original object, okay, then return the value corresponding with whichever key comes first alphabetically. Whoa! <laughs> now that's interesting. Now, okay, that's quite interesting. Question from the chat. <clears throat> if you cover all the frequent camp curriculum that you've done so far, will that be a good start in front end development? It will be an amazing start, in my opinion. Hello. Hello, the new subscriber. <laughs> all right, so now that's quite interesting. Uh, we need to keep track of the key because if they overlap, we want to have the value which comes alphabetically first. But now I have an idea which should help. So if you look here, the object they provide us is in alphabetical order. So A, 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 B, C, D, F, G, and so on. Or is it? D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. No. no. <laughs> uh, I guess we can sort the keys here when we're looping over. And then just reverse it. Thanks for making FreeCodeCamp tutorials. Does it make sense? So let me show you. Console.lock object.keys uh, obg. If we test this, you will see an array of all the keys. Now, we can sort this. And now df, def should come before df, dfg. Hopefully, yeah, you can see there, which is good. Now that is that's in alphabetical order. But here, if we go A A A, and then we go A B C, this A will override this one. So in order for that to not happen, we can just reverse uh, reverse this array. So then we go backwards. 
and the first one, well, the last one will be in alphabetical order, will overwrite this one. Hopefully that makes sense. So then we avoid doing all the checks and storings of the keys and check if, well, all that stuff. So now this should work. Look at that, it works. Good. If someone has a question regarding this challenge, let me know. If not, then I'm going to submit it. Uh, well, actually, let me quickly go over it. So we get all the keys, we sort the keys in alphabetical order and then reverse uh, because we want to store the key with the alphabetical order. But now, if we're looping over here, we're overwriting it. We could also just go backwards. So i is key dot blank. So we wouldn't reverse it here. Well, that will be an improvement. Uh, but then the substring will change. Nah, nah, that that's fine. We're doing a loop over again here, which is okay. Not the best thing, but okay. Look at that. So we have an error. Expected nine nine seven nine eight to equal two hundred. Now that's a one out of two hundred and six. Usually those are buggy. So let's console.log the object to see what we're dealing with. And also maybe we want console to console.log the uh, new object. Will you make a video how to grasp from W3C official docs? I never found a tutorial on it if possible. Uh, well, I'm not sure. What exactly do you mean? W3 looks pretty. Oh, look at that. We get all of these <laughs> console log. How can we find the one who's failing? No way. So we have a bug somewhere. Okay. Where's failing? Can we see the one who fails? Okay, here. Mm -hmm. How can I check for that? The case when you have two keys. When you have two keys, I'm not sure what you mean. What two keys? Okay, so that's a bummer. This will probably take longer than I expected. With ID number and ID string. Return and define the else block. <clears throat> Return and define the else block. Uh, I'm not sure what that means either. With ID number and ID string, I covered that. We're sorting and reversing. So that's covered. Okay, for example, if we get the number, okay, I understand this. Be aware that you could simply add all these partial keys one by one to the object. However, for the sake of avoiding clutter, we don't want to have a JSON with a bunch of nonsensical keys. What that means? Thus, in a random test, there will be a test to check that you did not add or remove any keys from the object passed in or the object returned. I think this is the issue, but I don't understand it exactly. In a random test, there will be a test to check that you did not add or remove any keys from the object passed in or the object returned. What? So we can't add and remove from the keys? Hmm. No, that's odd. 
uh, how are they checking that? This looks a lot harder for a 6Q. Yeah, so that doesn't pass. And they don't tell us why. I mean, can't see exactly what's wrong. Is it this one? This long one? No, not random tests. Tribe, uh, not random test. Okay, so that's random. Should not have extra keys. Extra keys. Does anyone understand what they want? Should not have extra. Mm -hmm. To return the value associated. Wait, wait, wait. So all of these are passing, but not that one. Okay. Why did I de I started doing one which only 83% finished <laughs> of 21? Oh no, so 68%, 68 people completed. <laughs> Probably because of this test. <laughs> Be aware that you could simply add all the partial keys one by one to the object. However, for the sake of avoiding clutter, we don't want to have a JSON with a bunch of non sql keys. What this means? Not sen oh, without sense. Okay. Thus, in the random tests, there will be a test to check that you did not add or remove any keys from the object passed in or the object retired. So if you're not allowed to add keys to the object, then how do they want us to do it? Yeah, these kind of tests might just break your mood. <laughs> Madeline, what were you saying they returned undefined or else block? Hmm. Maybe skip the keys that already exist. Keep the keys that are exist. Okay, that's actually a good idea. But then we won't going to reverse. Won't go on reverse because we're just getting the first one. Okay. So if new object dot key then if not then we're adding it now this new object that key could be zero so that won't work but let's try this now okay now so apparently it didn't work will you stream like this regularly yes I have a trip planned next week, but I'm not sure if we're going or not because of the virus. Uh, but if not, then I'm going to stream probably daily or I don't know. Follow me on Twitter, um, join our Discord if you want, and you'll be uh, 
uh, you'll get notified when I do. I'm planning to do a lot of live streaming, and videos, and coding. Okay, so should not have extra key. What are extra keys? You found something on GitHub. It seems it is done with proxy object. I have no idea what proxy object. Hello, a lot of subscribers. I should probably decrease this. Is it bugging for you? No. Let me know. I didn't know that existed. Let's see. Proxy, proxy object. JavaScript. Let's look at that. Proxy. Place order object with contains traps. Which contains traps? The target object to wrap with proxy it can be any sort of object. Okay. A trap to set for setting property values. All right. The proxy object you choose to define custom behavior for fundamental operators. Lookup, assignment, enumerators, functional, function invocation. Hmm. I want to see an example. Can we see an example? Let's read this article. Uh, get name and target. Let handler equal get target name, name and target. The proxy is used to define custom behavior. You may run into terms, concepts here shortly. Okay, three keys handler, tar traps, and target. Click here for a list. Okay, so P is new proxy. Uh, an empty object and a handler. Common object property lookup. Oh, so how did how we look up like that? Uh, proxy O handler get function. Oh well, that object property value property equals throw throw. Oh, Gordon, it's great what you achieve day by day while having fun. Unrelated question. How you organize your time? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not good at asking that question. Well, I just uh, do whatever I like. And apparently I like coding and live streaming. So that uh, works fine. Do what you like and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, this challenge is more than 6Q, I agree, maybe a 2Q, two, two um, probably not, but there requires some knowledge which is uh, more than I could now handle. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, we almost passed. <laughs> <laughs> which is good so let's just skip it and do another six one which well usually the six ones are pretty easy but apparently this one is not uh let's just do something which consonant value this looks like it was completed more times even a local string that has alphabetic characters only and no spaces return the highest value of consonant substring. Consonants are any letters delta except those. For example, for the word zodiac, let's cross out the vowels. Okay, values are Z, D, D, S. 
All right, for the strong 75. Okay, do not manipulate input more. Okay, so this looks, even though it's more work, uh, looks easier. Well, the last one looked easier too, but <laughs> all right. So what we need to do is to loop over the string, get rid of all the uh, all the vowels. So let's write a function uh, is vowel, which will get us the char character, <laughs> get the character, and it will return. Uh, let's see. See that test. Oh, no. So I'm going to write. Should I write the regex or not? Well, I won't. So let's, let's create an array of vowels, which will be a e i o and u. And now we're going to. In return if a vowel includes C so if that is there then uh, it is a vowel otherwise it this returns false all right good next we have the vowels we now also need a function which gets uh, the values so a will be 1 B will be 2 if you followed along on Twitter uh, you oh, oh correct you okay okay thank you see that's why I like having a chat active because you're helping me thank you <laughs> uh, okay function let's see we want to create a function character to value which will again get a character and lowercase string so we want to return character Character at char at char code at zero minus ninety six. I know this from the top of my head, but what this does, it will get the s to s to value of this character. Now, if you're not familiar with the s to table, here it is. Uh, we are getting all these uh, letters. Or characters and we want to get their de decimal value so we're using char code at with uh, with which let me close this uh, which requires at what index we want the character from so where we want the character at zero this will return us a number from this table for example for G we return 103. Now we need to, to convert this G to let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how do we convert G from 103? <laughs> That's not the word. <laughs> 103 to 9 to what was it? <laughs> uh, 7. We subtract 96. They just is to see with A. So in order to make A be 1, we subtract from 97, 96, and we get 1. So that's what this function does. We have a is vowel function, uh, which, well, should actually be the consonant, but okay. And now we want to return uh, our string, which is a string with all, well, these words. And we want to split that string into a list, well, into an array of characters. So this function will convert zodiac to D, O, and D, and so on. Okay, so now we want to filter out all the vowels. So we're going to use filter, and we're going to pass in this is vowel now this will actually not filter out all the vowels but will filter out all the consonants so let's change this to is consonant how do you type it like that and 
instead of returning if the vowel includes C, it will return if it doesn't include it. Now, that should work. Let's see what we get if we pass now. We should get an array with all of the uh, consonants. But I see now an error. The error is that we're splitting the string and we shouldn't suppose to because we need to find the consonant substring. So instead of splitting the string into an array, let's just replace replace um we want to replace the vowels with an empty string. So then we get the string with all the consonants and between the substrings of consonants we'll get the space. So we need to write here something and the space. Okay, so then the is consonant function is not helping us much. Okay, replace is consonant. Yeah. We're going to need to write the regex. So forget this. <laughs> but at least now you know how to create a function to check for that. And instead of... Uh... Yeah, this is what happens when you're not planning ahead. <laughs> you're... You'll start doing something and then halfway through you realize that it wasn't uh, what you wanted. Okay, so we need to replace the vowels, which are A, E, I, O, U. We, we're passing them inside these uh, brackets. If you didn't saw my regex tutorial, uh, I highly recommend you do. Regular expressions, Florian Pop, search on YouTube and it should pop up. All right, so all of those should be replaced with an empty string. Okay, now we can see that on Zodiac, we get Z, D, and C with a space between D and C. Well, two spaces between Z and, between D and C because we have two vowels. Now, instead of doing then this, we can check for one or more uh, vowels and replace them with one string. For, well, before we checked only for all individual vowels. But, but with this plus we can check for zero or more vowels. So now if we test, we should only get one space between D and C, which is what we want. Perfect. Now we have a string with all the uh, consonants separated and also the group of consonants which is perfect we can now split it by a space and we'll get all the pairs individually like that and uh, let's see what we need we need to add up all of the individual consonants value and at the end, we'll have a total value. So... We can map over it. Uh, we need to apply this chart to value function. So let's try that. We can map over the substring or I don't know how to call it. Uh, string or something and now if we do chart to value it will only work for the first ones chart code of zero okay so it will only work for those and we're, it will return the value for the first character which is not we, what we want why would we have not a number there Oh, an empty space. Okay. So we might have a vowel at the end of the string or at the, uh, at the beginning of the string. 
and with this we're going to create a space so we can just use the trim function which will remove the spaces from the beginning and the end of the uh, string so now this empty space should go away a out awesome so that's good we are close now in the map what we want to do we have this string which what might be one or more consonants and we want to convert them to uh, the value mm -hmm. if you have any questions regarding all of these let me know uh, Okay, so Steven says, I'm a bit late, can someone explain what this kata is about? Sure, so we're getting a string which has consonants and vowels. We need to remove the vowels and add up all the substring of consonants values. We get the values A, B, 1, A being 1, B being 2, C being 3. So for example, and then do the maximum. So what's the maximum? substring of consonant values I guess I can paste the code in the live stream uh, so you can also take a look yeah that should be a good idea from now on <clears throat> okay let's go back so what we have so far we have an array with all the substring consonants we need to go inside each of them and add up their values so I'm going to write another function uh, which will, let's see, add up, add up, add up, add up a substring, which will get a string and do what? On that string, we want to split it again in individual characters. We want to map those characters character to value so we'll get the numbers and we're going to use reduce to add them up together we're going to have a accumulator and a current item and we'll do accumulator plus equals item now this function here adds up all the items inside of an accumulator starting with zero so it will say uh, let's see if we have one two three for example First, it will check the item is 1, it will add the item inside the accumulator, which by default is 0. Then the, the next item will be 2, it will add up to the accumulator, which is 1, it will become 3. And the last item is 3, it will add up and become 6. So that's what this function does. Add up substring. Okay, now if we apply this function to our string, well, we can just do this then. Uh, we should now see instead of an array of subst substrings, we should see their total value, an array with total values. Okay, look at that. And now we have an array with numbers. We need to find out the maximum from these. So we can just wrap this everything or map.max and spread in the array we're getting and this should fix our little challenge well all right <laughs> there was a lot of stuff uh, probably i went too fast now it's time for questions if you have any questions let me know i did i told you that uh okay orange lemonade is gone i told you that but there are a lot of small steps we need to do for this one. We can now even try to simplify it, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> I need to look over it. Maybe I just went too crazy about it. We could use regex. We could. We could use. <laughs> no. We could use regex to find all the substrings oh well nah. okay so apparently no questions
that's good i can submit it and let's see what all right look at this crazy submission let's see what it does could you not just make an object with the keys being the consonants and the values being the values you want you then split the string into an array and reduce it adding the key value to the accumulator that's an interesting idea but i don't know would you create the object on your own like all the consonants uh, you also need to keep track of the spaces so remove the vowels and add up those so yeah that's not a lot different than what we did we just instead of object we used an array let's see what this uh, guy did uh, split by that so yeah exactly what we did oh he split it oh that's actually better we replace it and then split it okay so that's doing one uh, both of those things in one go and then reduced s and n mat.max s and that split reduce okay so we use he used two reduces to do what we did your way was shorter anyway <laughs> okay so uh yeah over time if you're doing this a lot like i started to to do lately uh, you'll start to learn a pattern especially when you're looking over what other people did so this is actually clever so let's give it a clever up i think okay let's see this one et the char code plus value Complete reduce mat max uh, it's not very very intuitive s that match okay so it matches all the non vowels okay get the maximum of mapping reduce okay so what we did but instead of splitting and replacing it does uh this all right good so that was pretty fun let's try another one if you have any suggestions of which one we should try uh, let me know let's go this and sort by popularity and do another let's try a five i'm feeling adventurous <laughs> i shouldn't <laughs> i will probably fail okay any chance you could make this a weekly thing uh, yes i want to I can't start doing that now because we're uh, planning to go through in a trip but we're not yet sure if we can because of the virus so uh, anyway either starting next week if we don't do go to the trip or either starting by the time we're getting home uh, I'm going to do a weekly thing maybe one day of the week i could do code wars the other way the other day i could do some uh, css html javascript websites or maybe some games uh yeah joyce is not safe uh, i have a lot of things planned my idea for the long term will be to stream daily for a couple of hours now I'm not sure uh, the time zone is different most of you are uh, lazy people and you wake up eight hours after I do <laughs> yeah I'm just kidding uh, so that means I have to do the live streams at night but I don't know I wish I could do them in the morning for a couple of hours and then have the afternoon free to create more content I don't know let's see how uh let's see how that goes okay <laughs> rude <laughs> well i'm from europe you're from america from america so you wake up eight hours later so that's lazy to me 
<laughs> I'm kidding. I'm also lazy. Well, I don't sleep much, but I am lazy. <laughs> All right. Good. Sum of pairs. Let's uh, try this. I'm from the UK, so am I. Okay, so Joy and Steven are not lazy. <laughs> They're just two hours lazier than I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, given a list of integers and a single sum value, return the first two values, parse from the left, please. Oh, look at that, please. If you please, sure, why not? In order to appear of appearance that add up to form the sum. So, entire pair is here earlier. Four. Okay, so six or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, some pairs. There are no pairs of values that can be added to produce two. None undefined is based. Turned. All right, so this looks like whoa. Negative numbers and duplicate numbers can and will appear. Note, there will be list tested of lengths upwards to 10,000, no, 1,000, <laughs> 10,000 times 1,000 elements, <laughs> 10 million elements. Be sure your code doesn't time out. One thing I'm not good at at the moment is this, making sure that the code runs uh, the fastest, I don't know. Uh, so we couldn't do a uh, double for loop, I guess. It will time out. Yeah, pick another one. Sure, if you say so, I have no choice. I have to pick another one. Otherwise, you'll be mad and I'll be sad. <laughs> okay, let's pick another five one. Uh, maybe do it the, I don't know, easiest five one. <laughs> Why is this the easiest? Only 21 people did it. Uh, I don't know. Of course I'm not going to read that all. Nested loop will, loops will definitely time out. Yeah. I need to learn how to do that kind of thing. How uh, to do those maps? I don't know. Maybe it only go once and I don't know. really don't know. Okay. Next five. Candy count. Please make it simple to understand. I don't want to read that much. I'm lazy. Magic five. Coding. They're all only finished a couple of times, so that Feels like heart to me. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do a six one. A couple of nights ago, I did like three or four four ones, which were pretty interesting. But I'm not sure if I could do them now. Uh, not easiest. Let's make the most completed. That should be. Look at that, most completed and I completed them. Stop spinning my words. Okay, this looks fun. I like working with strings and arrays. Well, I work with strings because I convert them to arrays. So write the function, then takes in a string of one of or more words and returns the same string but with all five or more lettered words reversed. Just like the name of this kappa. Things passed in will consist of only letters and spaces. Spaces will be included only when more than one word is present. Uh, okay, this looks fun. <laughs> Steven says that he picks up just those that 
uh, are less than three lines. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Uh, spin the wheel. Spin the words. This looks fun. Uh, let's not rush into it and let's see what we need to do. We want to loop over the words. So we're going to split them into an array. Loop over the words. If the length is bigger than 5, uh, we will reverse the string. Oh, can you copy the link here? Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I think I will need to stop this subscribe. What I have. Does it bug you? Or should I leave it? I'm not sure. The sound in my ear is powerful. I'm not sure if uh, that's the same for you. So let me know. Okay. So again. Loop over the string. First convert it to an array of words. Loop over the words. Find if the word is bigger than 5, the length of the word. And if it is, uh, just swap it. Well, reverse it. So let's write the function reverse string, which will take in a string and it will return the string spl uh, split by the letters, reverse the array and join back the array. Now this should reverse the string. Good. Now spin words. Why don't you have something here? So uh, long string. Return the long string. Thing. We want to split it by spaces, then map over the words and get the word. Uh, if it is longer than, if the word length is longer than five, right? Five or more, so uh, like that. Then we want, so we do a ternary here. Then we want to do reverse string on the word. Otherwise, we just return the word. Uh, I think that's it. We now should have an array of the words. We need to join them back. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that looks fine. I'm not sure if we'll have some spaces uh, uh, join them back. So we split by the space. We need to join them back by the space. So, yeah. So compare this 6Q with the one we did previously with that uh, funny test, say the least. Oh, do you have any questions before I submit it? <laughs> you have one, two, three seconds. <laughs> okay. Let's see how someone else did it. The split map over the word. If the word is bigger, word that split, reverse, join, otherwise word. So exactly what we did. We just uh, created this uh, as a function. Hello, Akam. I'm fine. Drinking my last, uh, I don't know, 20 milliliters of orange juice, orange lemonade. I found that they usually only have one function. Yeah, they do one-liners. Cool, Johnny. I can barely do four loops. Watching this seems like some alien coding. <laughs> no, I'm not an alien. I just did probably hundreds of these. And I understand... Well, I learned the array methods. Well, you need to learn the array methods. Uh, you need to learn the string... Well, not actually know them by heart. It's not necessary, but to know that something like that exists. Be vigilant for coronavirus virus. Okay. Hopefully, I this is why I'm drinking uh, uh, orange lemonade to increase my how is that called my immunity. I think this helps. I don't know. Hmm. 
All right. Ooh, that was sour. Uh, next kata. How many we did? I don't know. Binary simulator. This is in beta. Beta, beta. How do you pronounce it? Beta. Hmm. Some words sound funny from my mouth. Hopefully, in a couple of months, they month. Okay, I'm tired. <laughs> Hopefully, in a couple of months, they won't sound that funny anymore. As I'm talking more, and uh, yeah, should be better. Given a binary number, we are about to do some operations on the number. Two types of operation can be done. Uh, I, I, J, which means invert the bit from I to J. U, I. Answer whatever the ith bit is, 0, 1. The MCB most significant bit is the first bit, 1. The binary number can contain leading zeros. Uh, so he wants to, uh, which means invert the bit from I to J. Okay, so invert all the bits. Uh, okay. I found that some of the katas are just difficult to understand what you are meant to do. Yeah, I found that too. I I saw one uh, which you needed to create some kind of uh, lights for cars. So you had a road and you had to go with the car and see if the light is red, then you stop. And it, it was by working on a string which was very odd i tried to understand well i kind of understood it but i just couldn't figure out an algorithm to do it so yeah uh i think this is also fun uh, q changes q returns the bit right answer whether the uh, i's bit is 0 or 1. Hmm. And so why is this? So it changes the all the digits, then changes the digits from 2 to 7, then answers... Uh, what? Uh, yeah, why is this returning? You're only five Q at the moment. Uh, just just do a couple of four Qs. Might take more, a little bit, but it will rank up. Let's see. I'm close to three. Hopefully, it'll get to three. I want to get top one percent though. That will be fun. But I think there's a long way. Okay, so that was not that fun. I think let's start. Try a four Q. And uh, look at all these people subscribing. They was crazy. I got, let's see, checking on my phone. Uh, I got so far 900, no, 4 with 7, no, 4, 700. <laughs> 730 subscribers today that's amazing i usually get 80. hello all new subscribers hopefully you like my channel <laughs> uh top four percent is good mate yeah but i want one percent <laughs> can i send code pen here because i can't find a solution to an error in getting my on my js code uh we're not doing that, well, I guess. This is a code word specific, but, well, send it on Discord, maybe. That will be better, I'll help you there. The more you do, the easier it gets. Kind of find it difficult at the beginning. Yeah, Andre, that's true. So the more you do, start with 8 and 7, then go 6. 
if you find it hard go to the next one and yeah the more you do when you complete it just look at the solutions uh, uh, look at the solutions and uh, see what what they did and try to understand what they did even that's because you're doing life life code wars mate make it a weekly thing and watch your numbers grow like crazy <laughs> well that's because i got uh on twitter i got a tweet which just went crazy one 1200 likes so far and it reached uh 54000 people so yeah, and at the bottom I also have a link to my YouTube channel. So this helped how many people clicked the link. 1160 people clicked the link to my YouTube channel. So this is why I grew. Uh, cool Johnny, give me the link. I'm, I'm going to look over one. Alright. Uh, But yeah, I want to do this weekly. As I said, my wish will be to stream for three or four hours a day from Monday to Friday. Uh, that will be like, I don't know, a part-time job, which I really like. Hopefully it will help me financially in the future. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> for, for now I just make $3 a day from ads. <laughs> well, that was not requested, so. Uh, most completed. I'm going to post in the Discord server under your help section. Okay, perfect. Do that. That's perfect. All right. So let's. You can see that I did one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six of the four cues. Permutations. I don't like permutations. Next big number. No big numbers. I guess. The observed pin. This looks algorithms. Oh. Uh. All right, detective. One of your colleagues successfully observed our target person, Robbie the Rubber. We followed him, blah, blah, blah. The keypad. He noted on the pane, whatever. Too much to read, sorry. Your content is really good, so just keep doing what you're doing and you'll start getting a lot more money from it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully. I want to work on some courses, probably in the future, which will help a bit. Hello, Ivan, again. You've been gone. Shame on you. Why you've been gone? You've been sleeping, didn't you? Adding big numbers, sum of intervals. Twice linear. I just want to do something which is not that hard. Consider a sequence U where U is defined as follows. The number U01 is the first one in U. For each X in U when... What? <laughs> what? X in U where then Y is 2. What? No. And why I'm struggling? Let's just do six for now. One day I want to do either one or two. I have to have those under my belt. <laughs> Please remember us when you come to in the rich list. <laughs> Liam, hi. How are you? Okay, so six. Let's go for. Does my number look big? This. A narcissistic number is a number which is the sum of its own digits. Each raised to the power of the number of digits is given base. In this kata, we will restrict ourselves to decimal, base 10. For example, take 153. 1, plus, plus, okay. Okay. Now this is easy. Going from 4 to 6, it's a big jump.
Ivan, I had to go for a little bit. My people needed me. I need you. I'm your people. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to pronounce my name, though. Liam. Hm. Liam. So fun. LT. I call you LT. <laughs> Do either once as most of the people watching will be trying to learn so you can teach them higher order functions, spread and rest operators, callback functions, things method as you go. Discord gang is here. <laughs> Hello Discord gang, finally. Good, so let's do this. We get a number and we want to raise uh, each of the individual numbers to the power of the digits. So that's simple, right? return we want to split the numbers to get all the individual digits uh, and then for all the numbers do met that pow to the power of the digits of the length hmm. take the digits we need we need a digit Okay, let me think. Mm, let's get the length. So, const ball string. I'm going to do plus value, and const uh, length will be val string dot length. Okay, so now we converted the number. Oh, not like this. Like this. So we convert the number to a string, so we can get its value, uh, its uh, length, and then. We want to do val string that split. Oops. We want to convert the string to an array. If you if you'll follow along over the over this series, you'll see that whatever I do, I end up converting either numbers or strings to arrays. <laughs> I, I like doing that. So split the number into arrays, then map over and convert them to numbers, passing in the number function. And then we want to use reduce, uh, accumulator, an item, and we're going to add to the accumulator met.pow item to the length. Uh, okay. No. One is narcissistic, exactly true. Oh, so we need to say if it's narcissistic or not. What that means. A narcissist is a number which is the sum of its own digits. Each raised to the power of the number of the digit. Uh, oh, okay, so we need to check if that is equal to the number. Alright, alright, alright. So we need to return this equal to value. Alright, good. Oh. Uh, yeah, now let me go over what I did. Again. Let's... Uh, I guess we don't need this map number. We can just convert here to the number. Okay. The length, the splitting, the whatever. Just return true or false. Yeah. So first, we get the number. We need to... Uh, get all the digits of the number so we're splitting the number well we're converting it to a string first and then we're splitting it into an array which will get all the numbers but the issue is that they will be strings now so uh, 371 will become 3 7 and 1 like that so we want to add them up. Well, actually, first we want to raise them to the power of the length. That's why we need the length. Uh, and that's what we did here. But first we need to convert them to a number. We can do that by just adding a plus in front. Or if you want to be, uh, I don't know, if plus is not good for you, then you can do parse int. But I just don't like that, so... I'll use plus and then we're using the reduce function which will go over all the items and it will add the value of this inside the accumulator which starts at zero okay using template strings is a clever way to convert to a string 
yeah template leader yeah you can do that or you can also do const uh, val string will be plus value an empty string plus a value this converts it to a string that's the magic of javascript all right any questions shortcut for your information i just forgot them all <laughs> okay let's see this still works i had the map here because i wanted to convert all the uh, strings to a number but we can just convert them here so we are skipping one loop over the entire array which is good it's cool but your level is for kata let's solve something difficult okay give me something difficult and i will fail most likely <laughs> okay so plus value split reduce plus that uh okay accumulator plus method pow this converted to a string or oh, that length oh that's clever actually so he did uh, the conversion here so we don't yeah the one liner interesting <laughs> should we jump to one kappa yeah sure <laughs> why not Let's see if we get the one cutter next and do a one cutter. <laughs> Whoa, that's hard. We need to summon a ray. Let's do that. Summon. I need to summon a ray. Uh, write a method that takes an array of numbers and return the sum. Okay, so let me show you the magic of reduce. Reduce takes in an accumulator and the current item, and we do return accumulator plus the item starting at zero. Yay! For some reason, sometimes when I complete the one, uh, these easy ones, I don't see my uh, my points going up. I'm not sure. Convert a string to a number when you can do any of the following. To convert to a string. Hmm. Not sure what you meant there. Uh, let's three do something more difficult. Keep in mind that it's uh, 11 p.m. here, so I might not be able to do that. Well, I might be able to do that, but not talk my way through. Find the missing letter. Uh, write the function, write the method that takes an array of consecutive increasing letters as input and that returns the missing letter. You will always get an invalid array. You will always get a valid. See, I can't read. The number 55 plus string, string times 1. Yeah. So you get a number from a string if you do all those that's exactly true i don't I usually don't uh, do those though especially not strings uh, less than less than zero i'm not used with uh, bitwise operation yet <laughs> unvalid that was poor english <laughs> playing that instead of reading okay uh should we do this or do another one we did something similar we find we found the number inside of an array well the missing number well actually no we found the last num. well the next number to the missing number let's do this why not uh do, 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 do. Now we'll have a case here. Uh, <laughs> because we also. Whoa, I don't like this. This bugs me. Okay, now it's better. Uh, we can have an array of lowercase letters or uppercase. So we need to check for that first. I guess. Or no? Hmm, let me think. So we want to loop over the letters and 
convert them to well get the SG value and if the SG value plus one to the current item is different than the SG value of the next item we just return that right yeah so let's do that a good old for loop let i zero i less than array dot length uh, i plus plus and here if uh const current will be array uh I don't like to type array so let's change this array dot uh, i const next will be array of i plus one and if well let's do the char code at zero which will give us the sg value a if current plus one is different than next then we want to return a string from char code current plus one which will do the opposite opposite no the yeah you you understand the opposite of what we did with char code that and we should go minus one so we don't have to go till the uh, last element and we can return that is it possible to have uh, a not working one yeah apparently all works fine does it make sense let me know if not i'll go over what i did or i should just go over what i did without asking you i know not sure so i'm looping over all the elements in the array converting the letters to the sg value so here whoa that's bright so a we're converting to 97 b we're converting to 98 if we're thinking this is our array we check if a which is 97 plus 1 is equals the value of b if it is we move on if it's not that means that the b is missing so we just return b by converting from char code that was easy all right let's do a couple more i don't know i should go to sleep soon it's late yeah so exactly what we did uh char array zero okay first plus i different than okay so he's using i that's fine next return negative <laughs> next Fibonacci sequence no thank you too long to read salute salute certify how are you a uh, friend or foe too easy I'm the monkeys <laughs> I'm a monkey Come on, IP validation. All right, they like this. Write an algorithm that will identify valid IPv4 addresses in dot decimal format. IPS should be considered valid if they consist of four octets with values between 0 and 255 inclusive. Input to the array is guaranteed to be a string, single string. Is a fellow Romanian. All right. Uh, not note that leading zero are considered invalid. Now this will be fun. False, 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 false. True, true, true. Okay, so. Da -da -da -dum, da -da -da -dum. Oh, you're not Romanian. <laughs> Met that floor string seems so overkill. Yeah. Okay, I understand. 
I feel a regex coming on. Yeah, regex. That's the king. Uh. Do 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 do. Uh, let's see. So first, we could hmm, regex. We need to check if the numbers are valid, which are from zero to two hundred and fifty-five. Uh, so for that, I could just split uh, the string to get all the separate value. So I could do something like return string split of dot. And then this will give us all the individual um, items. But now we also need to check if the length is 4, because if it's not, then uh... also we need to filter if the word or if the S is valid, is valid ipv4 whatever so pass that in oh i guess we can just do is valid ipv4 and do this function here oh is a valid number whatever function is valid number takes in the number and returns uh plus n which converts it to a number is greater than zero, greater than equals to zero and plus number is less than equals to 255 now the issue here will be uh, one we will get not a number uh, two we might get zero one and this converted i think it's one which is also not good uh, but let's see what we get so the filter we're looping well we're splitting getting the four values and we want to filter out all the non-valid so if that's right we have four valid numbers we should have the length be four and if the length is four then should be good now uh, we will have a couple of test cases which will fail because of the mentioned conditions let's see console.log string for which one is failing a deep space okay expected false got through see zero one how are we checking if it's leading zero i don't know i i think i know Expected force instead we got through 1.2.3.4. Why it's false? Uh, 1.2.3.4. Why can I not verify if they consist of four octets with values between 0 and 255? Uh, okay, so why is this false? Can someone tell me? I think you need to stick with the code where streams <laughs> yeah plus 25 plus views exactly <laughs> well I only have uh, one more section of record camp which I hopefully finish uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and probably Saturday and Sunday <laughs> so in four days it's pretty difficult so might take longer <laughs> Mishto. That's Mishto. Sure, if I ask me to say something, oh, <laughs> something cool in language. How many languages can you speak? Uh, three. I can speak Romanian, Hungarian, and English. And I can say uh, no in a lot of languages. Like I can say no in French. <laughs> I can't say no in French. There is a space before one. Oh yeah, there is a space before one. Uh, 
that's true. So we need to be aware of that. Where are you from? I'm from Romania. Okay, so we need to check for that space. Let's see. But look, we don't have a space here, which is also invalid. This is also false. Why is this false? We don't have all the write an algorithm that will identify valid IPv4 addresses in dot decimal format. IPs should consist valid should consider valid if they consist of four octets with values between 0 and 255 inclusive. So this doesn't tell us exactly how an IPv4 should look like. Which is annoying. How's the coronavirus situation? Uh, we get like 40 people. Like, can you use pad to add that zero in front? No, we don't want to add that. <laughs> Ahmed, you saw me in the dev stream chat. Yeah, that stream was crazy. 600 people. Whoa. I can say JavaScript in all languages. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> How can make your own tests if you get stuck? Oh, you can make your own tests. Uh, well, I don't need to make my own tests as uh, we have them here. So I understand that this is uh, false, but I don't understand why. Uh, look at that. So. We need to check if this converted to a number is, should be false. So how would I check for that? Oh, that's pretty clever. You can also comment out all tests other than one at a time. I never thought about that. So we can just comment out all of those. Okay, let's uh, do that then. Thank you. That's pretty clever. I never thought about that. And now we're, we're testing. We only see the ones which fail. Which fail because of the spaces. Uh, so how do I count the spaces? Uh, so we can't count on the num... The, because... Space 2 will convert to 2, and 2 space will convert to 2, so that's uh, not good. I guess we can also say and number, well, uh, test for decimals, uh, 0, no, 1 or 3 only test the number so we can write this regex which tests if there are only numbers one or three numbers one or two or three numbers so that's fine no 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 Pro error unexpected token oh sorry that's how I do it anyway. I just get one working and, and comment. Okay, so our regex test failed. Uh, why do I need to add this? I just want to check. Yeah, that's good. Oh, no, attempt. I want to test. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me do something else then. I want to see console.log. Uh, let me write the regex. Console regex will be this D1 and 3. And then I want to console.log regex.test uh, space 1, which should be false. Let me comment that out and see. I want to write the regex for that. True, true. Uh, no, that's not true true. 
I want only to start and to end. What's the end one? This one with digits, only digits. False, false. Okay, okay. So now that works. We start with a digit or three. Well, a digit, two digits, or three digits. How do you say it better? We start with at least one digit at maximum of three. Where's the dollar sign? Here. Yeah. All right, so now that should work for those two cases. Invalid. Oh, I forgot the parentheses. Okay, so now we should check if it's uh, uh, if it has a space or a letter or anything else. Good. Now that will work for more tests now. But we still have the failed one with zeros, I think. Let me remove this. Uh, is there any white space? Yeah, ha that's how I do. Okay, I think my stream was miles behind. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, goodbye, last chain. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, yes, Liam, just refresh. <laughs> okay, let's see which one we're failing. 256. Uh, why is this expected false got through? Why is this passing? Because convert the number and we check if it's less than 255. Yeah, but we check maximum of. What's wrong with that? We check if the number is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 255. And if it's a, a number. Hmm. Let's do what uh, Steven suggested and only have that test. The test. <laughs> what? Test passed. Value false. What? You're messing with me. Oh, this one failed. Oh, I was looking at them wrong. So this one failed, right? Yeah. Okay, so zero one zero two zero two zero four. Uh <laughs> how do I check if it has a zero? I could use regex. Put parentheses around your code and operator precedence. Cause a lot of hard to find but Around these you mean? So I just need to check if that's... If... Uh, has a leading zero so let's see we want to pass for zero but not for zero one so what we can check if to convert this to an to check if this has a leading zero and it's a conversion to the number is not zero right so and well not and how where can we check that if n plus, I'm going to do it here now, n plus, uh, no, if we have a leading zero, test n, and n plus is different than zero, then return false. So it has a leading zero, and it's different than zero, then it, it's basically zero one. And return false. I need to incorporate that in this line. So now that should work. Yeah, look at that. Let's look for all of them. Okay, 28 failed. What? Oh, zero, 00 is also not uh, 
Oh boy. So zero zero is also not good. I guess if we fix that, well, or n is equal to zero zero, <laughs> or n is equal to <laughs> zero zero zero. Okay, <laughs> that this is just dumb. Uh, <laughs> but it works. So I think I don't know. <laughs> Let's test. <laughs> Yay, look at that. We hacked it. <laughs> okay, I'm tired and we can't think of a way to <laughs> make this like more clever. <laughs> yeah, it feels hacky because it is. <laughs> Alright. Uh let me right here. This is hacky. Because, because I was tired. <laughs> let's submit it like that. Oh, let me remove this at least. We want to have formatted nicely code. Also, the console log, we can't leave it like that. Uh, okay, so I guess... <laughs> I guess we can say... A uh, leading zero will be <clears throat> to test if this, uh, like that. So this leading zero will test if it starts with a zero. And then if leading zero and number is different than zero. Or, or what? Um... Or, 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 the length of n is leading zero. Oh, I think, I know. So that's pretty, I'm no, not sure what I didn't talk about. So if it's leading zero and n that length, this should be a string, right? Yeah. n that length is greater than one. So it has a leading zero and uh, and that length is bigger than one, but it can be a leading zero. No, it shouldn't be able zero one should be false. I guess now we can pass that there. So I can remove that. Let's still see if that works. Okay. Uh and this goes somewhere here. Uh, how? Just convert to a number and check if it's equal to zero. Yes, but zero, zero will be zero converted to a number. So we don't want that. That was the main issue in the first place. <clears throat> Sorry. So how, how can I put this here? If this then false, if not this and and not this <laughs> oh this also looks hacky <laughs> let's see if it works i wanted the one line yeah look at that <laughs> okay <laughs> uh you try to figure out what i did here <laughs> Ternary operator time. <laughs> All right. No way. Look at this regex. Think that split filter. B equals to number to string and what? B equals to number V to string. And the number V is less than 260. Ah. Really? He did it? Whoa, this is really clever. Link the video on there. Get some hits. <laughs> yeah, I should have to. I should. Uh, well, I should. 
I can't speak anymore. I should have, should have had that. <laughs> Why are you watching me code anyway? <laughs> All right, now this is clever. I wish I knew what he did. I guess where is uh, our regex man? He would tell us what he did here. All right, what's the time? Two hours and five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I I, I kind of want to do more, but I'm tired, so I'm not sure. Let's see what's next. This can go on forever. The maximum sub sub arrays problem consists in finding the maximum sub of the continuous subsequent sub sequence in an array. Oh, what? So the maximum. Nah, I don't like this. Needs dynamic programming. I should look into this. Should be a something fancy. Simple encryption. Take every second char from the string, then the other char that are not every second char and concat them as a new string. Uh, okay. Do this n times. Oh, try again. Apparently, I did it. Can I see my solution? Let's see how I did it. Hey, but I did it. Why don't you want me to show my own solution? Try again. Hmm. Since you have not solved this. What? Try again. Oh, I think I just... I started and I didn't finish. Okay. Nah, I'm too tired for this. Sorry if I disappoint you. All right, I think that's it for today. I got 750 subscribers today. Whoa, that's huge. Thank you all for subscribing. I hope that uh, from now on we'll see more people like today in the live streams. In the yesterday's live stream, we got five people, which was uh, <laughs> interesting. And only Jay was active. <laughs> Dynamic programming means that you save the values of calculations and then you check to see if you have already calculated that value. Yeah. I know the basic concept, but I never uh, never did something like that. When I played the code, it was code fights. I saw some, uh, uh, some solutions with dynamic programming. They were like four level deep arrays. J for special guests. <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm going to do more in the future. I want, as I said, to do live streams and then eventually turn these live streams into standalone videos. So, for example, if people are searching how to fail on Code Wars, they can only see a five minute video, not a two hour video. Um, also, I want to do in these challenges something with HTML and CSS, maybe build websites or applications. Uh, so that should be fun. Are you leaving? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Am I? My wife is sleeping for an hour now. Please include the problem set in the description. Whoa, I need to go over the video. <laughs> uh, can that someone do that for me? <laughs> go over the video and see which one is solved. But yeah, it would be nice for, for people to find that. <laughs> Liam is true. Liam, not Liam. LT. LT. <laughs> Don't make your wife wait. Well, she's sleeping, so 
<laughs> She's always like going to sleep two hours faster and wakes up one hour later. So she's like, are you even sleeping or what? <clears throat> Liam or Liti. Liam. Okay. Liam. Liam. Like Lee. <laughs> Someday I will pronounce your name right. Your name. See? See what I did that? Your name. That's nothing. Not even an English. <laughs> English. Okay. See what you did. <laughs> like Mr. Neeson from Taken. <laughs> okay. Um Let's see. Do you have any suggestions about these uh, series? I am English nine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly how I pronounced it. <laughs> You're right, Stephen. At least mine does. Webcam chips. Whoa, chips! I totally forgot! I have a bag of chips! <laughs> That's my bag of chips. I shouldn't eat chips at midnight, but oh well. And webcam. Yes, I would like to get a green screen so that you won't see where I live. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, should go, should do webcam. I just wanted to for the record cam series to finish. Bye, Jay. Thank you for being around. I like hanging out with you guys on Discord. Steven, if you want, uh, feel free to this to join us on Discord. We're pretty fun people. <laughs> at least, uh, but well. We are fun. Ivan is not that fun, but don't tell him. Uh, we are, nah, we're laughing at his jokes because we don't want to make him feel uncomfortable, but you know. But other than that, we're pretty fun, so you should join our Discord. <laughs> All right. Partial keys. Now, this is annoying. Why didn't we? De declarative programming. This bugs me that we didn't finish it. What's the link? Uh, let me give you the link. All right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think f uh, from the next live stream, I should always, uh, always, I should also store my submissions. And I could turn them into some Twitter posts. That will be nice for content. Uh, and I should, yeah, put in the description the time I'm doing different challenges. So it will be easier for people to find them. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was kidding about Ivan. He's funny. Hopefully you know that I was kidding. He has some cool dad jokes. Not death jokes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I guess that's it. I wish I could do more Code Wars, but I just feel that it will be a pain. No. Steven is in this car. Yay, look at that. Okay. Um I I, I think I'll stop now. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to continue the Frequent Camp uh, curriculum series. I have let's see. Uh, three lessons and four, five projects, I think. 
how can I zoom in? This. So information sec information security with helmet, quality assurance with test and testing with chai, uh, advanced node and express, and then five projects which are pretty hard ish. Uh, because they need to, well, we need to write tests and everything. But once we're done with this, uh, well, that will be fun. We can do whatever we want. We're free. <laughs> all right. Thanks all for joining. Uh, join the Discord if you haven't. We can discuss more there. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.